So this is a massive deep sky target, a, an emission nebula. It's a southern target, one I've definitely never shot before. I didn't even know that you could capture this target from the northern hemisphere. Are you ready to take the uh, tripod shot at the down at the beach? <laughs> Are you coming with me? Yeah. I think it's safe to say that no one else here is doing any astrophotography tonight. Momentarily. I could see it through the viewfinder of the camera. Oh. Hi everybody, it's Trevor from Astro Backyard here and sorry for the strange lighting and uh, scenario. I'm here by the bedside table in our resort in Costa Rica. It is the last day of the trip and uh, I've wanted to do some astrophotography while we're here. At night it's been an incredible night sky full of new constellations I've never seen before, southern hemisphere constellations, even though we're still here at uh, 10, 11 degrees north latitude. So still in the northern hemisphere, but I'm seeing some southern hemisphere gems, including the target that I wanna shoot through this Red Cap 51 telescope, which is the Carina Nebula in the constellation Carina. So this is a massive deep sky target, a, an emission nebula. It's a southern target, one I've definitely never shot before. I didn't even know that you could capture this target from the Northern Hemisphere. That's the deep sky target for tonight through my uh, imaging, my deep sky imaging rig here with the telescope and the tracking mount. Even though the weather is so beautiful down here and it's very pleasant and in shorts and sandals, despite that it is very windy here so a lot of wind gusts off the ocean and uh, so as you can imagine with the, the telescope and the tracking mount, those long the strong wind gusts up to 40 50 kilometers an hour make subtle shakes to the the gear and ruin my long exposure images so um, when i tried to take my deep sky image through the telescope two nights ago i was dealing with a lot of wind and a really rough polar alignment that's the problem i can still see the big dipper and where the north star should be but because it's so low it's behind a lot of turbulence and the a lot of atmosphere and it's just above the, the bright lights of the resort to the north so even the really great spot that i do have to image with the telescope where i get a nice view to the southeast horizon polar aligning is very difficult and i'm kind of guesstimating where the north star is to do this so i, I can use my polar finder app and the gps to tell me uh, where it should be for my exact latitude but uh, so far it's been really tough to polar align. So I'm starting to feel for you guys in the Southern Hemisphere that don't have a North Star to, uh, to quickly and easily polar align each time. Not off to a good start. I didn't know they lit fires out here, but that's the resort behind me. I'm just in a big patch of grass. There is a big, oh man, beautiful. Big open piece of sky here though and probably some lizards walking around. So as, as you might be able to hear, it's a bit insane out here. There's a wedding going on, there's carts going by. It's about 10 o'clock, but I'm about to take a 20 second exposure on my first Southern Hemisphere deep sky target ever, which is of course the glorious Carina Nebula. And to make things even more difficult is just barely above the trees. So, but you'll see it here on the screen in a momentarily. I could see it through the viewfinder of the camera. Oh, there it is with the tree. So, there's the Carina Nebula. There's a tree blocking my way. So, hopefully in about 20 minutes or so, that'll clear the tree and I'll actually get a photo of this sucker. Holy my boy. Holy my boy. Well, I'm back home now and it is snowing out there. From 33 degrees in Costa Rica to minus 12 
here in Ontario, Canada. I'm sunburned and peeling a little bit and uh, a little bit sad to be back home, but also so happy to see Rudy again here. It was so dark and so noisy and so windy at the resort. I just wanted to fill you in with exactly what happened on that last night when I photographed the Carina Nebula. First off, the battery in my Canon T3i, my modified DSLR, died. So I was forced to use um, a Canon 7D Mark II, my wife's camera that I actually brought down to this location for some wide field shots with the camera lens attached. So I actually took that camera, attached it to the Red Cat, and took the images of the Carina Nebula using a stock DSLR. Ended up working out pretty well. To polar align, uh, it was just a matter of trial and error. I would take these test exposures of 30 seconds each, uh, very close to being polar aligned and making fine adjustments until those star trails got smaller and smaller and through trial and error I was able to finally get round stars after about 10 minutes of, of frustration with polar alignment. My final image includes just over 9 minutes worth of exposure time. You heard that right, less than 10 minutes total. So there was a few passing clouds that night and that, that was all I was able to get was just under 10 minutes. So 18 times 30 second subs. But believe it or not, it's actually a decent image because the, uh, the skies were so dark and the focal ratio of the red cat is f4.9. I got some serious signal in those 30 second subs and uh, reduced the noise drastically by, by stacking the 18 together. I accomplished my goal of capturing the Carina Nebula from Costa Rica on our trip, but the overall point of this trip was our honeymoon for Ashley and I. She was such a good sport about me leaving the room and staying up all night, setting up in a field by myself, capturing images through my telescope, and she'd uh, wait up for me in the room. It's so important to have someone to be able to share your astrophotography with and to get excited about with and that's supportive of you. And uh, for if you're anything like me, it's you wouldn't be able to do any of it without that. So um, whoever that person is, if you're, it's your husband or your wife, maybe let them know how much it means to you um, to be, to have that support like that. I hope you enjoy the image at the end of this video. As many of my images do, they mean a lot more than just the deep sky target themselves. There's a whole story that goes into it. And this one's really special to me. Thank you.